what it do, SRT gang? You see a boy with the fat swaggy reacts, and we are back with another reaction video, man. And shout out to Mr. Nightmare. Now, y'all, now I told y'all that I like the last, I mean, for the next few nights, I'm going to be giving you guys Mr. Nightmare videos. But tonight, we're going to be checking out three disturbing 911 calls with backstory. So, like, share, comment, subscribe, man, if you're fans of scary stories or just, like, you know, just scary stuff in general. I try to drop one of these every night. You know what I'm saying? So, make sure you guys are tuned in when I drop one of these joints, man. Again, shout out to Mr. Nightmare. I ain't finna hold y'all up, bro. I ain't finna hold y'all up, dog. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Get this video to 200 likes. I'm trying to get to 50K. I think y'all know the routine, by the way. I think y'all know the routine. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and check this out. Let's get it. Sean Grates stalked Northern Ohio between 2006 and 2016, slaughtering women after assaulting them. He's now on death row awaiting execution, thanks to one would-be victim's bravery. The following 911 call you're about to hear is of that would-be victim and is possibly one of the most tense 911 calls you'll ever hear. Oh, on wow. September 13th, 2016, Ashland police received a phone call from an unknown woman who police referred to as Jane Doe, who whispered that she had been kidnapped and was tied up mere feet away from her sleeping abductor. She what? tried to describe the man who was holding her captive and the house she was in. The best she could manage was that it was next to the 4th Street laundromat. What is the address to your emergency? By the Fourth Street laundromat. What is it? Fourth Street laundromat. What's the problem? I've been abducted. Who abducted you? Sean Green. You said John Green? Sean Great. Where's he at now? Asleep. Where's he sleeping at? In the bedroom. In what bedroom? What? There's two houses right by. The Listen, I understand y'all want to get her information. It doesn't matter if he, like, like if she said that she's been abducted, and the guy is sleeping. Like, why, why are you asking what room this, that, and the third? Just get to the location that she gave y'all. Like, why you gotta be all like? T In what bedroom? There's two houses right by the laundry street. And it's in one of those houses. What color is the house? Yellow. Please hurry. Is it an apartment? No, it's a house. Just get, she just said it was a house. Like, oh my God, this is pissing me off, bro. These 919 operators, bro, like, listen, it's an emergency, bro. Just get an officer there. Okay, does he own the house? No, he what broke into it. Does anybody actually live there? I think they've been abandoned. Does he have a weapon? He's got a taser. Are you injured? Oh, my God. A little. Where did he take you from? My, my apartment. I mean, I was walking with him. You were walking with him? Mm-hmm. Or were you walking to? Yo, this is really pissing me off. They literally sitting here having a full blown conversation, bro, right now. They having a full blown conversation when, like, he can wake up at any moment and realize what she's doing and kill her. Cause y'all want to have a full blown conversation instead of getting the officer there. Like, this is really making me mad, bro. Like, talking too. Yes, but I've known him for like a month and a half. Is there any way you can get out of the building? I don't know, without waking him, and I'm scared. Is there a bathroom in the house? Well, his bedroom is closed, and he made it so it would make noise. But if you told him you had to go to the bathroom, he would do something to you? Yeah, because he had me tied up. Are you tied up now? Well, I... Yeah, but I kind of freed myself. Like... Is he in the same room with you? Yes. Bro, like... Are you bleeding from anywhere? Bro, like I know this is pissing y'all off, bro. Cause this literally is pissing me off. We're question by question that she's asking. Stop, like just get there, bro. 
Get there! While the 911 dispatcher continued talking the caller through escaping, Jane accidentally knocked over her captor's taser, waking him. The line went dead briefly, and she was suddenly minutes away from being the sixth victim of the serial killer, Sean Great. And by this point, the police knew they had to race if they wanted any chance of saving the helpless oh, woman. Oh, 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 now y'all wanna rush. Now y'all wanna rush. Great sat up in his bed and stared at the floor before laying back down again, not realizing that Jane was on the phone with the police. Are you still there? So much longer. What? So much longer. Do you hear any officers outside? Oh my god. Okay, they're in the area. Can you get out of the house? No! She just said it's that! Locked. Are you at the door? Yeah, I am. She's at the door. She's at the door in the right side of the house. She got out of the bedroom. Is there a window there? Yeah, I'm looking out of it. Come, come back. She said, to hurry, hurry. She said to hurry up and come back. Yeah, they can see me if they it's come through it. The door is locked. Come out, come out. Hurry up, hurry up. Get out of here. Where is it? Is that them sleeping? Yeah. Okay, they have her. You went on her arm. I The rescue of the woman and arrest of Great was heard on the call. Thankfully, the woman survived this ordeal, though likely not without having some lasting scarring effects on her. For sure. As a teenager growing up in Marion, Ohio, Sean Great was well liked, particularly by girls. He had a charm about him that would mask his inner rage, at least for a while. When he was 18, he was arrested for grabbing his then girlfriend by the throat. A few years later, he was arrested for breaking into his 17-year-old girlfriend's home and choking her. And only eight months oh, later, whoa. he broke into the same girl's house again, this time slipping underneath her couch and hiding until he saw an opportunity to strike. Wait, wait, slipping under her couch? What kind of couch y'all got that he can hide under under the couch? What kind of couch? This time slipping underneath her couch and hiding until he saw an opportunity to strike. This time he had a butcher knife in hand. But Great's charm and artificial friendliness allowed him to go on and have three children with three different women, but his inner anger would never lay dormant for long. His ex-wife, Amber Nicole Bowman, claims that Sean at one point said, if I can't see my daughter, no one will. By his mid to late 20s, Great's behavior became more erratic. He would begin dating Christina Hildreth. The pair were happy and content in the beginning, but Great couldn't hide his true colors for long. Not only did he become violent, controlling, and jealous, he would also show signs of being cold and indifferent towards his confused girlfriend and would eventually end up physically abusing her. So was he violent with you? Yes. In, in what way? Um, he broke my hand, blacked my eye, strangled me, tied me up. But his hostility would soon extend beyond just romantic partners and even to friends when he asked his friend for a loan, which was declined, and in response, he sent his friend a disturbing text saying, meet the other me. Eventually, Great would find himself living in Mansfield, hopping from woman to woman, and around this time, he met his first two victims, Rebecca Lisi and Candace Cunningham. Rebecca was a sex worker, and her body was found in March 2015. Her death was ruled an overdose originally, but Great later pleaded guilty to her murder. Candace Cunningham lived with Great in Mansfield before her disappearance in 2015. Police. Yo, like this dude get a girlfriend like every week. Like this, like what is going on right now? Like he got he he got he like this damn. He couldn't find her until the day of Great's arrest when he led police to her body, which was lying behind a burned down house in Richland County on the day of his arrest. That's crazy. Great managed to somehow become even more barbaric towards his next and final victim, Jane, who you heard in the phone call just before. 
Jane met Sean Great around her apartment complex, and he eventually gained her trust. That was when he exposed her to his true self. He trapped her in an abandoned house and forced her to endure days of torture and other unspeakable things while she was tied up. Great barely slept on the first night of his victim's capture, giving her no chance of escape. However, after another day of torture, Great eventually passed out. His phone was right next to him going off, but he was seemingly in a very deep sleep. So Jane took this opportunity as her likely last chance to escape alive, and she reached over his sleeping body as stealthily as she could to pick up the phone and dial 911 while still partially bound. And that was the start of the 911 call. When police arrived at the property, they were met with more bodies than they'd expected. Great had been mercilessly killing the women who were unfortunate enough to trust him, and some of them were decomposing in the house he was squatting in. Oh my The 911 God. operator received a but they decompose and why y'all are still even in there? Like they're but oh a lot of hate and ridicule God. over her loud voice and constant seemingly unnecessary questions during the call. As many people believe she could have very easily led to great being awoken, either right. by the sound of her voice or because of all the questions she was making Jane answer. Exactly. Thankfully things went the way they did. And this 911 call was a very fortunate story, as it got a monster off the streets who no doubt wouldn't have stopped doing what he was doing. For sure. What? The call you're about to hear was made by millionaire James Bob Ward, reporting that he had just shot his wife. His tone throughout the call is very monotone, calm, and nonchalant, considering yeah. the matter for which he's making the call. The real estate mogul claims he walked into his and his wife's room to turn in for the night, and was shocked to find his allegedly depressed and intoxicated 51-year-old wife, Diane, holding his Magnum handgun. Bob says the weapon accidentally discharged while he was struggling to get it away from her before she could kill herself or him or the both of them. Whoa, no, wait, 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 wait. They don't even, like, okay, okay, like, why does she even have the gun in the first place as you're walking in the house? What led up to her possibly holding this gun, you know what I'm saying, like, or like, as you entered the room? Like, that don't make no sense to me right there, bro. What? Let's hear it again. He was shocked to find his allegedly depressed and intoxicated 51-year-old wife, depressed Diane, holding his Magnum handgun. Bob says the weapon accidentally discharged while he was struggling to get it away from her before she could kill herself or him or the both of them. This was the call. Now with the emergency. I just shot my wife. You just what? I just shot my wife. Where's your wife? He's right here on the floor. We sent, we sent somebody at 5277 Iowa Country Club Drive. Okay, what's I'm, going on there? Yeah, I'm sorry. He's way too calm for his, I mean, for this to be an accident and like she she did this on her own. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I understand she's intoxicated and somewhat like depressed. But it's like, dog, like you literally like. Like, can, can, like, you know, control that, can stop that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, with her even having a gun to, whatever, bro, whatever, bro. Like, come on, she's not going to, uh, no. No matter how much you, how, how intoxicated you are, you're never going to, like, just, just kill yourself like that. Like, I, well, I don't know. Like, some people might. I don't know, but. I would. Don't you call drive. It just don't sound right Okay, what's me. going on there? I just shot my wife. You just shot your wife? I shot my wife, yes, please, since my other. Don't mind with me, let me add the fire department. Don't hang up. I will be. Where's the weapon at, sir? Orange County Fire Rescue, the address of your emergency? 44. 5277, Iowa work, Country Club Drive. I'm there. I just shot my wife. Okay, where's the weapon? It's in the, um, yes. I'm sorry? Where, where, is she breathing? No, she's dead. Oh, she's dead. You know that for sure? I think so, yes. Okay, sir, where, where is the weapon? It's in the nightstand next to the bed, the master bedroom. And I'll be glad to meet the officer, officer at the front door. Where is your wife, my dear, sir? She's in the floor in the master bedroom. How old is she? Born in 1954. Okay. You're sure there's, she's not breathing or? She's dead. She's done. I'm sorry. Sir, did you purposely do this? No. Or was it an accident? It was an accident. 
How long ago did this happen, sir? Probably five minutes ago. I'm on the front steps. You are on the front there. steps? Yeah, I'm on the front steps. Okay. And these are the front gates on the front steps. We'll go upstairs and find out. Yeah, hey, there's a big happening. You told me to go back up. Do you see the deputy? Yeah, I see lights, but they're somewhere back up. That's them back up. Hey, guys, over here. Over here. It's time. It's time to hear it. Bob was charged with second degree murder of Diane. He has always claimed the gun went off when he was trying to get it away from Diane, but prosecutors believe the two were arguing over financial problems, and that's why Bob shot her. Now it was up to a jury to decide, but to this day the question is, was Diane Ward's death really just a tragic accident, or did her husband Bob murder her in cold blood? But the question is, like, was she really intoxicated? Did, did, did the officers do their, you know, investigation as far as her being, having liquor in her system, heavy liquor, liquor in her system, like that he claimed to say that, you know, she was, like, you know, intoxicated. So like, we need the details, to, like, to this story. Really just a tragic accident. Or did her husband Bob murder her in cold blood? Well, not too long ago, a significant discovery of a letter from the grave may finally answer the question that's confounded the justice system and haunted the Ward family since the day Diane died. Bob and Diane had it all, a happy 26-year-old marriage, two daughters, and enough money to own numerous luxurious estates in several states. Like, that's what I'm saying, he was a millionaire, bro, so like, it's like, bro, like, like I'm pretty sure he invested in things to have money coming in, but it's just like, dog, like, if they was arguing about financial... Uh, issues, then something was going wrong. Know what I mean? Old marriage, two daughters, and enough money to own numerous luxurious estates in several states. Daughters Sarah and Mallory say they and their parents were a loving, tight-knit family. But eventually, Bob's real estate empire collapsed under the weight of the Great Recession. And even though Bob was facing bankruptcy, his daughters there claimed he remained optimistic. But not there Diane, who grew increasingly low-spirited over the prospect of losing the family fortune. Sarah said her mother vainly tried to ease her depression with booze and prescription drugs, and that she would turn wow. into a different person far from the loving mom she knew, and completely out of control even in public. She said her mother was also directing all her anger and resentment at her father, after having to cut back on some of the luxuries the family grew used to, and Sarah says her father was wow. like her mother's punching bag. Bob's defense what? attorneys painted Diane as a suicidal and unstable person, and in 2018, his defense attorneys produced new evidence. A suicide wow. note written by Diane was found in the couple's Atlanta home. It was reportedly wow. found by an estate sales professional in the closet in the master bedroom. She stated that she was on a ladder in a small closet in the bedroom when she noticed a pink notebook next to some hair rollers. She opened the notebook and found a note and some cards with Diane Ward printed on them. The alleged suicide note read, Dear Mallory and Sarah, Please know how much I love you. I don't know how it happened for me to end up like this. I want you to have wonderful lives and know that I will always be watching out for both of you. Take care of daddy. I love you more than you will ever know. Take care of the dogs, they will need you. Defense attorneys claim that a former FBI handwriting expert could testify that he thinks the handwriting is indeed that of Diane Ward. So this all begs the question, is what Bob says true? Whoa. Was his shooting of his wife an accident? Whoa. But if this were the case, Bob's calm and seemingly unaffected tone over the phone with 911, yeah. and even during his police interrogation, wouldn't make much sense. Like, yeah, like, that's what I was saying, like, bro, like, the way he's just talking and so calm about it, bro, it just seems like he, he did it, but, like, like, you guys see the note from her saying, like, yo, like, it's, like, you know, like, oh, my God, like, uh, I'm confused, like, tell me how you guys feel, man, like, how do you guys feel in the comment section? One one, and even during his police interrogation, wouldn't make much sense. Then you're doing it, brother. Any reading glasses anybody has? Sure. <laughs> thank, I have, thank you so much. Thank you. I have my pair. Thank you. I may have. I have a folding pair, pair but I think they took them. Thank you. Oh. oh like I said, I'm Detective Frost. Uh, I didn't get your name, your first name. I go by Bob. Okay but it's James Robert. 
It would be a safe assumption that anyone who just accidentally murdered their wife would show any kind of remorse or yeah, regret. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, like he's not showing no type of expression. Like he just like, yeah, like, yeah, it just happened. She just killed herself. Like, no, you're way too calm, my guy. You're way too calm. Especially for your wife that you've been, oh, you guys been married over 20 something years or something like that, they said. Like, dog. I, I, I'll be grieving right now, crying my eyeballs out. And anyone who just accidentally murdered their wife would show any kind of remorse or regret. For sure. Bob was calm and seemingly unaffected throughout. He's still in prison today. Man, that's weird. I don't know, bro. Y'all gotta tell me how you guys feel about that one, bro. I'm gonna, like, uh, I'm, whoa. Whoa. This last one has been circulating the internet for decades, and you've likely heard it before. In fact, I've included it in a video I privated many years ago. I'm sure some of you remember. But new information has arisen on this call recently. Uh, this is the roof price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, well, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. Oh, well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. And he comes to my door. And... Yeah. And, uh... Said he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm real, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm -hmm. I'm kind where, of where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, is he in the appointment right now? Oh my God, well, yo! <laughs> For the longest time, this phone call was commonly just referred to as things like old woman murder during 911 call. For a long time, people speculated that this call is just a hoax or a choreographed recording for 911 operator training. Eventually though, the woman's name was revealed to be Ruth Price and it was learned that the call was in fact real. However, the internet was still having a hard time gathering any further information on this Ruth Price woman, or what her fate was after the phone call. The unfortunate assumption that she was murdered shortly after this call was always the go-to assumption. At the beginning of the call, Ruth begins to give her address as 3877, but is cut off by the 911 operator. During this 911 call, Ruth presents herself as an elderly woman who's concerned about a man who knocks on her door saying he's looking for an apartment. Ruth pauses after giving this information, then you hear a blood-curdling scream, and Ruth says something about not being able to breathe. Recently though, information as to who this Ruth Price woman was finally surfaced. Ruth Mildred Starr was born in Pueblo, Colorado on December 7, 1913. Ruth went to Central High School in Pueblo, Colorado, and this was her yearbook photo. Ruth's obituary was recently found, which shows that she died in 1994 in the San Diego Union Tribune. Ruth was also mentioned in a newspaper section called The Salts on November 3rd, 1980 in the San Diego Evening Tribune. Wow. In this newspaper clipping, it says Ruth M. Price was assaulted on the 3800 block of 35th Street. Uh, this is uh, Ruth Price of 3877. This newspaper clipping which you see here fits the Ruth Price 911 call perfectly. It wasn't a hoax, and it wasn't a 911 training call. Wow, that blood-curdling scream was unfortunately very real. But wow, fortunately, bro. even in Ruth's old age, she managed to fight off her attacker and live for another 14 years. What? It seems like a realistic possibility now is that this call was used to shock trainees for 911 call taking because of how blood-curdling and disturbing her panic screaming was, and thus was born the legend of an old woman brutally murdered while on the phone with 911. Wow. At least this story had a much happier ending than originally thought. For sure, definitely. Oh my god. Wow, I was not expecting that ending for her to even... Like, so she got away from the attacker and still it was able to live. I know she's, like, traumatized from that, bro. She's traumatized from that now, bro. Like, like, dog. <laughs> Mr. Nightmare, bro. Like, you did your thing again, bro. Like, he hasn't been missing with these videos, man. Like, th th this is what I've been missing from y'all. Hey man, I appreciate you guys like telling me about these Mr. Nightmare videos. We got one more video to go, so make sure you guys are tuned in tomorrow when I drop another one. And also hit that like button for you guys out. I mean, I leave out and, and comment down in the, 
in the comment section because I need more comments, man. My comment section be kind of dead. Like, I want you guys to just give me your perspective on these videos, man, on what I can do better, this, that, and the third, man. I see every single comment, gang. And make sure you guys are tuning in tomorrow when I drop another one, man. It's SRT Gang. I am out this thing, man. Let's get it.